The story of the three Hebrew children is familiar even to people who don't read the Bible. One of the truly great experiences of faith in the Word of God. And so I want us to lay hold of the essential truth of this chapter, which is faith. The theme of this chapter is faith. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 34 pick this up. By faith they quenched the violence of fire. Didn't put out the fire. Didn't destroy the furnace. They just quenched the violence of the fire. It's a marvelous thing when a believer can enter into the fire, but the fire doesn't enter into him. That's what faith is all about. No person here today lives any better than his faith. If you have no faith, you have no life. If you have little faith, you have little life. If you have much faith, you have much life. All of God's response is a response to faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. And I notice in this chapter that we have illustrated four different kinds of faith. And each person here today can examine his own faith and say, this is where my faith really rests. First of all, if we'll look at this vast multitude gathered here on the plain, waiting for the orchestra, for the band to start to play, bowing down to the great golden image, 90 feet high, 9 feet wide, up on a great pedestal. If you look at this crowd, you'll see one kind of faith. It's what I call credulous faith, gullible faith, faith that believes anything. You see, man has to believe something. Man is so constituted, he has to believe. I meet people in restaurants and airline terminals and out in the street and they say oh yeah you're 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 a reverend you're a pastor sure you've got faith I don't have any faith but they're reading the Wall Street Journal it takes faith they get on the elevated that takes faith get in the taxi cab that takes faith they get on an elevator go up 80 floors that takes faith everybody has some kind of faith the only difference is that we Christians have our faith in God through Jesus Christ. Faith is only as good as the object. I could worship this piano and I'd get exactly what a piano could give me. I could worship these flowers and I would get exactly what flowers could give me. Everybody has faith. You believe in something if only in yourself and your bank book. But here we have a great mob of people who had what I call credulous faith. They bow down to an image. They say, oh, this is the thing to do. We believe in the great king. We believe in his image. A nation of sheep. Credulous faith bows down to the authority of man and credulous faith is impressed with statistics. Everybody's doing it, except those three guys. But if you take it statistically, all of these people here on the plane about to dedicate this image, all of us are bowed down. And if everybody does it, you should do it. I like what Henry David Thoreau said when he said, I march to a different drummer. Oh, how many people today are credulous, gullible, and if someone starts a parade off, they go, because everybody is doing it. Have you heard this stupid statement? It makes no difference what you believe in as long as you believe something. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. If that were true, we'd be up to our armpits in flowers. I don't believe that. I hasten now to the second kind of faith that is uh, represented in this chapter, cowardly faith. 
But when the music began to play and the signal was given and everyone went to his knees, only three men were left standing. Where were the rest? When Elijah was up on Mount Carmel, praying and fire comes down from heaven. I read later on that there were 7,000 who had not bowed the knee to Baal. Where were they? It's easy to show up afterward and say, hey, we're with you. How about standing with someone when he's standing all by himself? Cowardly faith. There are words there who believe the same way as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but they did not have the same kind of faith. And they used the same excuses you and I use. And so they used all the excuses and all the rationalizing that all that we do cowardly faith. You know why? You know why they had cowardly faith? They were afraid of the furnace. They weren't afraid of God. If a man fears God, he fears nothing else. If a person walks in the fear of God, he's not afraid of the faces of people or the furnaces of kings. And if he has to stand alone, he'll stand alone, but he won't be a coward. Cowardly faith. We have a lot of that today. And after these cowards had bowed down and gotten up again, they said, oh, we got to get together and pray for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They need our prayer support. Bless your heart, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego needed to pray for the cowards. Cowardly faith. Now, you and I don't face furnaces or idols or kings. We face ordinary, everyday people in the office, in the store, on the neighborhood. And yet we're cowards. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me and of my words, I'm going to be ashamed of you. There's a third kind of faith, and this is the one I want to spend a little more time on. I call it commercial faith. You say, what in the world do you mean by commercial faith? I mean this. I will believe and obey God if you'll do something for me. Look at these three men. Our God is able to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we aren't going to obey you, okay? Now, that's not the theology I see in the books in the bookstores today. I look at the books in the bookstores, the cassettes in the tape racks, and here's what I see. If you believe, you can be rich. How about that? That's good. That's one good reason for believing, so you can be rich. If you believe, you will be healed. That's a good reason for believing. You can be healed. Here were three men who said, we're not going to believe. We're not going to disbelieve. We're not going to disobey. Regardless of what happens to us, we do not have bargaining faith, commercial faith. Oh, I meet people who do have commercial faith. They say, oh, I believe in God. He answered my prayers. Suppose he didn't answer your prayers. Would you still believe? Is it right to believe in the true and living God revealed in the word? Yes. Then regardless of what he does, believe. Oh, I believe in God because he gave me a job. Suppose he didn't give you a job. Suppose you lost your job. Oh, I believe in God. He healed somebody. Suppose he didn't. If your faith is resting upon what God does instead of what God is, you have commercial faith. And one of these days, God won't give you what you asked for. One of these days, God won't answer your prayer. One of these days, God will want to give you something bigger and better and greater. And then you'll get angry at God and say, oh, he let me down. Wherever you go today, you meet whimpering saints. Though they want to believe so hard. They know they just want to believe, but God let them down. God never let anybody down. I dare you to find me any place in this book where God let anybody down. We've let him down. Job didn't have commercial faith. You can tell when a person has commercial faith, when he loses something, he complains. God doesn't love me anymore. God has turned his back on me. God has forsaken me. That's commercial faith. It's satanic. It's infantile. Can you remember when your children or grandchildren were just little tykes? They come and say, Mommy, I want this. Oh, I want it so badly. And you say, No, you can't have it. You don't love me anymore. 
Ever hear that? God hears this often. Somebody comes and says, Oh God, I've just got to marry that girl. If I don't get her, life won't be worth anything. God says, You do get her, it won't be worth anything. <laughs> you think she's a dream. I happen to know she's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I've just got to have her. God says, No, you can't have her. You don't love me anymore. Whimpering, infantile saints who judge God by what He does, not by what He is commercial faith now the faith you've got right now my friend what would happen to me what would happen to you if God didn't give us some of these things would we still love him and trust him and obey him which leads us to the fourth kind of faith the faith of these three Hebrew children confident courageous faith do you know what real Bible faith is? Real Bible faith is not saying, I know God will deliver me. They didn't know whether God would deliver them. No angel had brought a message. They had nothing from God. They knew God was able to deliver. That's not the question. God is able to heal. Is he willing? God is able to give you a job or a wife or a husband. But is he willing? That's the question. They did not know what God was going to do, but they did know that their God was the true God. You know what Bible faith is? Courageous, confident faith. It is obeying God in spite of circumstances and in spite of consequences. You see, cowardly faith says, obey if it's safe. And credulous faith says, obey if it's popular. And commercial faith says, obey if it's profitable. But confident, courageous faith says, obey if it's right. Though all the world turn against you. And that's the kind of faith that's lacking today. My faith and your faith are not proved by the songs that we sing. No matter how sincerely we may sing them, or the prayers that we pray, no matter how sincerely we may pray them, my faith and your faith are revealed by the light of the fire in the furnace. When we stand before the furnace, we see everybody bowing down. And we know that we have a decision to make. That's where faith is revealed. A crisis does not make a man. A crisis shows what a man is made of. And these three Hebrew children were made of courageous faith. You've discovered, I'm sure, that life is not a playground. Life is a battleground. The older we get, the more the battles become more serious. God says... When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. I'm not going to send a substitute. I'm not going to send a care package. I'm going to be there. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Look at verse 9. Fear not, for I am with thee. That's Emmanuel, God with us in the struggles of life. Thou art with me, God with us in the sorrows of life. Oh, what do people do when they go through the valley? What are you going to do when you go through the valley? God with us in the sorrows of life. When you go through the valley, it's so wonderful to have the shepherd. I will fear no evil. I'm not going to fear the future. I'm not going to fear the present. Thou art with me. Thou art Emmanuel, God with us. Is that going to be your experience? It's time that we became men and women and put away childish things moved into that area of confident, courageous faith. 
that says our God is able, but even if he does not, we will not disobey him. For our faith in God does not depend upon what he does, it depends upon what he is, and he is the true and the faithful God. You and I are only as good as our faith. By the way, how good is your faith?